In this video, I'm going to show you how to create abstract motion graphics using DaVinci Resolve using a plugin that not many people know about. This tool is called FUI Designer, and everything you see on screen right now is made using just that, and it's a suite of effects that will get you some cool results like this. So if you're looking for a quick way to get some cool visuals, this is the video for you. And if you're looking to apply this to your own projects like AMVs or regular footage, I highly recommend checking out this video, which goes over some compositing techniques that will accomplish just that. And a big shout out to another editor crime area for using that tutorial to make some crazy looking visuals i love seeing what kind of work y'all do using my tutorials so if you ever want me to see your edits be sure to tag me in the video at clubboy fx or send them to me through discord anyways let's get straight into this all right with that out the way let's get straight into fusion you want to press Control and shift and space and type in reactor and then open up reactor and once you open up reactor type in the word fui plugin right here by dunn lewis this is also the same guy that made vonk so this is some pretty good good stuff good job done all right so click the checkbox on all and it will be installed into davinci when you preview it you don't see anything at first and that's because it requires a background node or some sort of media to be connected into it so i can get this random anime footage of zoro right here and connect it to the fui designer and it works just fine so first we have the controls tab just controls the x and y then you have main frame change the width height subdivision add main frame nodes which adds little tick marks or custom shapes to each corner of the frame you can customize these corner shapes to be whatever other design that comes with the fui designer pack so you can do show type frames lines others in this custom other selector we we'll go through all the many designs that come packaged in fui designer then next you have align rotation which automatically aligns the corner nodes to be parallel with with the frame so if i rotate the frame or do anything weird with it the corner nodes will stay attached to it and it'll align with the rotation you can also turn on nodes outline style and you can modify on top of these so for example if i take this weird abstract frame looking thing turn on duplication turn up the number and scale and then if you press this right arrow right here go all the way to the right and click on the ns format button you can change the rotation it kind of just looks like a flat pancake so in order to change Change that you turn on distribute in Z and this is pretty much similar to After Effects 3D layers where all of them are in perfect 3D. So now in just a simple of clicks I have a really cool looking abstract tunnel. Can you believe I just made all that in one node adding gradient maps to it? There you go and then to top it off get glow it and then after you add glow it I could add a quick animation by adjusting the keyframes on rotation go into the duplicate number and then get duplicate rotation and bring it down to like around 100 and then once i put the glow and gradient map on it that's something that looks really abstract and i literally made this in less than five minutes and this is just touching the surface of what this macro can do let's go into the other tabs and see what more stuff you can make then there's nodes rotation which rotates the corner then there's offset which controls the distance away from it then there's nodes outline style which will just take the frame and make it into outlines scroll down here there's the main frame style and this will change the thickness of the frame you can make it zero so there's no frame at all and then there are different types that you can go through like dash dot dash dot and dash dot Dot. These patterns are completely procedural, so the more you change the thickness, the pattern will update accordingly. If you want to zoom out and do stuff, you'd have to do it inside of these controls right here. All right, so I'm going to uncheck show slash hide mainframe. Let's go to the next tab. So this next tab is called UI frames shapes. So first you have these, by default, it's set to show type ticks, and you could change this to lines, frames, or others. This is exactly what is shown in the mainframe notes panel, but it's just that soloed out so i can go through the custom tick selector and find all the different types of shapes that are within here so this plus mark is pretty popular so i'm going to pick that for example then i'm going to go to duplicate turn on show duplication rank duplicate number up to like around 20 rotate it just a little bit scale it up and then i'm going to go to that then i'm going to go to the transformation tab turn up distribute in z scale it down and then make a very interesting look here something like this and then changing the scale will change the size of this tunnel here and look at that wow and if i want to make an animation with this i could all i'd have to do is keyframe duplicate number bring that up go to my spline all right nice 
if I could add the motion trails effect and that sometimes looks nice. Alternatively, I could use S trails and just add some custom settings to make it look a little bit better. And now I have another really cool looking animation. All right, let's keep going. So inside of the UI frame shape, you can make your own custom frame. So if you click show top and show bottom and then check the top slash bottom transform, you can position them and align them to be however you want. And this is a quick, easy way you can make a frame. They can show the left and right shape and go to the left and right transform and do the same thing for those. So I can scale those down. There you go. Now I have a cool looking frame. Just find something that works for you or something random and abstract looking like this. So next we have the center shape tab. Nothing will happen at first and that's because you need to go into center shape A, B and show uh, what it has. So it starts off with the line and pretty much you could add sides to this polygon and make whatever you want. So if I want a triangle, set it to three sides, easy stuff. I could change the angle sides of it. And then there's center shape B. And what this does is connect the shapes with each other. So now I have two triangles and you can notice the line connecting between each quarter of the next triangle. So you can make a really cool tunnel out of this or a logo. So I could turn up the sides and it will all procedurally generate and you could even change which lines are connected to each other using the line connection slider. You could change the shape angle. So, you know, like the camera icon, you could quickly create that using procedural shapes. And then on top of that, there are center nodes. So you can attach nodes onto the connection points, change the sides of them, do whatever you want to it. You can make them custom shapes as well. You could change the size, offset, rotation, and you could change what they are. This is the same thing as the mainframe icons so you have lines frames and you have others which is just random stuff that you can select then you have align rotation which will directly align with the rotation of the shape which is to outline you can do whatever you want with this you can have fun then you have center node text and if you show text then you make this a little bit bigger it shows numbers so you can i don't know if you're trying to make a clock or something really easily you can uh do that i just made a clock procedurally using this next we have have rulers if i select show ruler nothing will happen at first and that's because i need to turn up the spacing so if i turn up ruler spacing um this will evenly space out the lines based on the tick marks of a ruler these are the main line size and it's pretty self-explanatory. It pretty much makes ruler lines inside of Fusion. When you change the main lines count, everything will procedurally generate along with the lines. So there's some potential with this. You could do some motion graphics using rulers. And of course, you can modify these rulers and do whatever you want to them. You could do the method that I showed before where I duplicated it. So let me bring this to the middle location, turned up duplicate number, rotation, and there you go. Got some really weird stuff going on. There's not much to really say about this. You can just play around with it and you'll have really cool looking visuals without even needing to try. All right, let me reset this back to normal. So the last tab of this is the grid tab, and this will make a grid of tick marks or nodes. You can change the size of them, the angle. You could change the grid height, width, how many sides each node has. Then you could change grid style, which is just the thickness of it. So you can make them all dots, anything. You can pick how much space the nodes take up. So if you want to make a cool moving background, this would be a quick and easy way to do it. You can just scale it, rotate it. And if you go all the way to the controls tab, you can just have this slowly rotating. Well, unfortunately, you can't use duplicate on the grid effect. That might be a bug of some sort. Maybe that'll be fixed in the future, but you can use duplicate with everything else. All right, so I got a simple shape right here. So everything is being duplicated on top of each other. So you got to make sure you change the duplicate scale or something thing so you can make uses of those duplicates so you can keep them really close to each other and use fade color to make a cool little depth effect or you can drag them all the way out as long as you want and make a tunnel that's my favorite thing i love making tunnels but you could do whatever you want with it you could also change the rotation so i can go to distribute in z and then rotate everything so everything that's duplicated gets transformed on the z axis so it has actual 3d depth next you have the look tab you can change the the color of the lines to whatever you want you could add glow which is just regular soft glow and then there's draw on a transparent background which will ignore whatever media that you put into the fui designer node and just make it transparent 
So I'm just going to go over some quick compositing tricks that you can do with this stuff. So I have the clip of this random anime guy's eyes. And let me just quickly cut out the eyes. So now I'm going to get FUI designer. So I'm going to take this frame, duplicate it, rotate it. And then I'm going to get a matte control node, grab the frame of the eyes, and then set that as the garbage mat in the matte control. Go into the garbage mat settings, invert it. And now I have the FUI designer effect inside of the eyes. So I could solo this out. So let me take this, duplicate it, put that on a merge, and then move this one over here. Close draw on transparent background like that and now i can get another merge connect the original clip and now we have weird looking eyes then i'm gonna put glow on the eyes usually i use glow it but i'm just gonna use dream glow for now so i can get like a look of what i'm doing without lag then i'm gonna get the stellar clouds generator node connect that to the merge press ctrl d so it's swapped and then i could get a nice angle on this galaxy right here and now that's masked within the eyes and then i can add a light wrap onto the eyes so you know everything composites well with each other but to clean this up with the light wrap i'm gonna get the jw light wrap node and then i'm gonna get the light wrap node connect to the eyes to the foreground and then the face layer to the background uh, sorry i mean the other way around and then it gives me a nice light light wrap here that I can control then I can take the original face layer get a rim light cc node add that to it and now I'll just give it that extra little oomph that I need to make it look really nice since all of this is kind of laggy I can get a saver node and pre-comp this I can go and put in whatever glow I want so I'm gonna put glow it on it so then once I get a nice look with glow it I can go to the film look creator, add a quick bleach bypass to it, and then turn off the film look. Let's take a look at the masterpiece that we made. Look at that. The possibilities are endless with this. This is just one of the first things that came to my mind. So if you put some more time into this and really think of something that you could do, you can cook with this really, really well. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I will be going over more of the FEY tool set in later videos, and I will try to upload more. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Clout VFX out.